All right, let me adjust my mic real quick. There we go. All right, so this will be the video to explain my texturing process uh, inside of Gaia to get these, you know, a little more detailed textures out of uh, uh, your landscape and whatnot and get some cool looking landscapes in the process. So to keep it short and uh, to the point, I'm going to opt into just kind of talking um, out what I had already built here. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I used was a slope noise and I'm also built this out at 4k. That's what I'm using right here. So if it's slow to react, that's the reason why. Let me also change the brightness here and the ambient. There we go. Now you can see what's going on. So for the slope, um, you can use whatever you want. Really, the same texturing process applies to pretty much everything. I, it's how I texture pretty much all of my landscapes and have been texturing them for a very long time. But Gaia introduces really easy tools to do this. Now, in World Machine, I had to build out a whole bunch of selections to do stuff and had nodes everywhere. But in Gaia, we have nodes in here that we can use. So um, we don't have to spend as much time doing that. So for the slope, um, I chose slope noise because it's one of my favorite noises to use uh, next to line noise. They're both very, really good uh, noises to use, especially when you want to make really rocky surfaces. Um, and I applied the stratified uh, option here to it. I then broke it apart using breaker for the erosion, as you can see here. Breaker gives you these really cool cracks in your landscape. And built at higher resolutions, you get a lot more fine detail coming in off the cracks so it kind of just breaks it up a little bit that's why it's called breaker uh, then I use fold uh, fold I use in almost every single scene that I make I, I don't go a single scene without using fold um, and when you apply it with the breaker you get these cool little striations in the landscape and then you also get to keep the cracks where it's applied uh, especially up here and down here that just gives you these really cool features what I did after that is I used a slope here and this slope is selecting the steeper surfaces of our rock you're not gonna be able to see it here with the selection uh, but with the stratify right here you most definitely can so I use the stratify node to stratify these steeper areas so this is with fold and no stratification on the steeper areas and then with the stratify erosion node on the steeper areas and I just applied that to all of the landscape at every height uh, you can be a little more selective on it like right here probably don't need to really apply it down here or anything like that maybe more up here towards the mid-range like in this area but just for the sake of keeping things short um, and creating a decent terrain. I mean, this is not in any way, shape, or form a perfect terrain. Uh, even in the end, I would probably build it out a little bit more with more features. Um, but I applied it just to these steeper areas, just to break up uh, those areas a bit. Then I used thermal. Thermal is really nice because it erodes your terrain and gives you this sedimentation deposits, but also keeps the nice rocky look that you have going on, which is what I wanted. Um, you also get this feature in here where it's the debris uh, like that is settling after it gets eroded off and it fills in these nice little details and the way you bring those in is by increasing the debris size in the thermal um, erosion node I keep wanting to say thermal weathering it's just an old world machine habit um, <clears throat> and that helps break up our stratification a bit and adds the sedimentation but I also eroded it and I threw in a very basic erosion node um, I didn't change any of the parameters on this except for the duration I changed it from 4 to 3 and that was enough to just bring out a little more of the detail on this side but also giving us these awesome flow lines that we really need when we are going to be texturing I combined the two because I didn't want it to take up so much of this erosion um, I just wanted it to break up a little bit more the stratification on the on the steep areas but also break up the rocky parts that are being stratified um, and need to be eroded that way they're not too similar and 
um, unfiltered, I guess. We're just kind of taming it a little bit. I combined it using a blend method of 45%. I just blended it more towards the thermal side so I can bring in a little more of that sedimentation. And as you can see here, we still kept our debris in our sediments. All right. Think, this is why I tell myself every time I make a landscape is think granular because if you get really good small details in your landscape before you export it, you don't have to worry about those small details when you're texturing it in your 3D application. Next thing I did is I threw in a texture, and it's just your default texture here. This is the texture option under um, the data maps right there. It's just the basic default values. I didn't change anything. They're all default. And um, I threw in a slope right here. And what this slope is doing, it's not displaying correctly here, but what this slope is doing is it's selecting all of the uh, flat areas um, and steep areas. Like, it's a mixture between some of the flat and steeper areas because I just need a little bit of fall off between those two to kind of give it a good gradient. And I threw in a sat map here, and you can kind of see what we're getting if it, it kind of bugs out after I click through these nodes every once in a while. So there's our sat map, if it'll come in. There we go. So this sat map is the one that's attached to the texture here um, with absolutely not a whole lot going on. Um, I just wanted a nice grainy looking um, texture. As you can see here, it's nice and grainy, but really rocky looking too. And then I combined it in a mixer with a blend method at 100%, and I'm using this slope and this texture map. This texture map is just green and um, also dusty, green and dusty. So there's like a little bit of rock and a little bit of sedimentation going on there. And that's where you get these really cool looking like taluses right here coming off of the rock. Um, and then I just blended it together using a blend ratio set to 100 and then this slope is inputted into the max or the mask for the mixer and now we get our rock and our grass mixed and we're getting that grass in areas uh, based on this selection so right here is our rock surface and then on the top of it is where our vegetation would be and we can play with this a little bit more and break these up so we get a little better detail and definition in our uh, upper areas on our rocks but this will do for now. The next thing I did is I kind of just one step furthered it, I suppose is a good way to put it. Um, and I threw in, I copied this slope, which is the slope that we used for our stratify uh, erosion right here. And I just copied it and I attached it to the final landscape output right here on the combine. Threw in another sat map right here and all this sat map does is kind of uh, blends in with this one right here um, gives it a little bit darker look so we go from this to having this darker rock appear on our really um, steep surfaces rather than our flat surfaces so this is what we get and it's very m subtle but if you look like in these areas right here and right here, maybe even over here, you can kind of see the difference. It'll probably blink out and come back. It just kind of makes it hard to tell the difference. But as you can see right here, we just it's just kind of flat. And I mean, it blends pretty well, but it's just kind of flat there. Now, if we add this one in, we get the darker rock coming through right here, but also gets we, we get to keep that lighter rock that we have from this sat map and then this is the texture we have when we're done and you can kind of see the difference here you get the the different variations in the rock coming in right here rather than it all being just one uniform color across the board now we have variation in the color based on our slope and uh, and it fits in really well because that's where we apply the stratification and now it just you know looks a little bit more interesting uh, so yeah the the main deal here what the key focus here is um, building a landscape that actually 
looks good first. If you, if you try to build something that you know is really steep or really shallow, you're just going to get really weird stretching and distortion in your textures, and you're, you're not going to get a good look. And even down here, like, granted, this I only put this together barely. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. But even like down here, there's a few things that irk me, like these really long striations. I keep saying that. These really long, elongated features kind of frustrate me a bit, but you can see how we're getting a little more rock coming in down here and mud and debris, and it just flows really well. Um, you want to focus on making a good terrain first. That should be your first priority. Texturing is last, in my opinion, um, because you, you should be spending more time in Gaia creating a good-looking terrain rather than creating good-looking textures, but this right here is your procedural texture. All I did in the uh, the Gaia posts on Facebook is I made this the texture doing this exact same thing and throwing it into Cinema 4D, rendering it out with Octane, and then adding basic bump features to the the shader. That's all I did. I didn't. It's like no big secret or anything like that, um, and it's just a very simple way of putting it together. So I'll just go ahead and show you what this exact landscape looks like built out in Cinema 4D and Octane just real quick. I haven't set it up yet, but I will go ahead and set it up real quick. So I know due to the haste, the amount of haste that I'm putting into this, but um, this is texture one applied to the landscape. All I did is put it onto a plane and displaced it. Uh, so this is texture one. One thing I did fail to mention is um, you do want to throw in a normal map. And I went ahead and made this texture as well um, to uh, kind of showcase it as well. Uh, all you have to do, really, is just copy these nodes right here. Uh, not the normal map, but those seven nodes. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, I can't count. I just barely got off shift. I've been awake for almost 24 hours, so I apologize. Um, these eight nodes right here, the texture, the two slope, the three sap maps, and the two mixtures, all you have to do is just really copy those, and then you can um, just set them up differently here with different you know, variables um, to make a new texture. And... Then all you have to do is just go into you know your program and change out the texture if you want. You know, all you have to do is just add the diffuse. So there's the diffuse right there. Um, and then what I did is I added a bump in, and some noise. And this is just in Octane. I just use the regular uh, noise that's uh, Octane noise. And I increase the octaves to anywhere between 9 and 10 I find is pretty good. For these aerial shots like this and the omega set to one pretty much the max that way the amount of noise is small the detail is small but it's noticeable and i just kind of play with the gamma and the contrast to get the noise to populate in different areas so it's not all uniform across the board um, and then let's go ahead and reload this and see what this texture looks like applied and i also recommend um, exporting these textures out at higher than 2k so my recommendation it's you know you can take it or leave it my recommendation is is that no lower than 4k when you're exporting textures um, when you're an octane freezes when I move the camera and it really frustrates me um, no smaller than 4k um, and at, and if you can get away with it do 8k that's what I recommend. Uh, you don't have to do that. Obviously, it's you know you have to do what you have to do. But the higher the resolution for the texture map, the better. Um, but you should also have the same resolution in your landscape. Everything else isn't really all that um, doesn't really matter all that much. So if you're exporting maps like other maps that you want to use for placing objects and whatnot, um, it doesn't really matter so much that those are the same resolution but at least the landscape and the texture at least 4k 
I exported this out at 4K, but I'm just using a plane with the width and height segment set to 1000. So I'm, I know I'm missing detail in these landscapes when I do it this way. Um, a better way to do it would be to actually export an OBJ or something else uh, to do this, but uh, uh, it looks better in Gaia than it does in Cinema 4D. <laughs> so uh, that's that's just how I go about doing it. So let me reload this real quick so we can see what this looks like. And here it is uh, with the other material applied to it. This looks like more of a uh, sand dune, maybe mountain area in a desert, I would probably say. Um, but as you can see, the details are pretty good. I mean, there could be better if I were to actually play around with it a bit more. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of customizing in the actual landscape itself, um, but the textures came out the way I like. I, I would probably throw in maybe sand dunes in here that are the same color as this, like this orange color, just so it kind of sticks out a little bit more here and there. Uh, but that's about it. So if you have any questions um, or maybe any comments or critiques, uh, please go ahead and uh, shoot me them. And again, all I'm using is the diffuse, this bump, and this normal. I can turn all this other stuff off, and it's not going to make a difference to the texture itself. Because those are the only three things I'm using. It's right there. So uh, a nice thing about using textures like this that you make in Gaia is that they're all already procedural. So if you just know how to tame uh, your selections where you want to place these colors inside of uh, Gaia, you don't have to rely on a whole bunch of other people's textures that you may have purchased or anything like that. All you have to do is just make it yourself. It's already procedural. It's placed exactly where you need it and how much you need it because you're the one building it out in, um, in Gaia and then you're just adding the details in afterwards and you can use maybe a normal map based on you know selecting it based on slope or whatnot but yeah that's all up to you uh, anyways uh, shoot me any comments if you need to and uh, thank you